we start, let's look at some of the objectives for today's lesson. Firstly, we look at differentiating between fabric and textile. We look at identifying various fabrics and the properties to do with these fabrics. We learn to identify and define the term upholstery. And lastly, we learn a really fun trick how to calculate fabric quantities. Here is a really fun quote to start off today's lesson by the famous Zaha Hadid. I've always appreciated designers who dare to reinterpret fabrics and proportions, so I follow the Japanese and Belgium designers. The pieces are so animated. When they lie still, they are one thing, but once you stand them up or wear them, they become something else. Fabric and material are in fact quite a complex subject, especially when it comes to the intended use for each material. That starts us off on today's journey of fabric as we look at fabric and material application. Our first topic is the relationship with fabric. Fabric can be underestimated in the design industry and therefore is such an important element to focus on. Fabric's not only for interior decorators, it's definitely something us as interior designers use on the daily basis. Let's understand why as we explore the relationship we have with fabric. Part of our process and our role on any project as an interior designer is to use textile and fabric as a tool to create a mood and set the tone for our space. We will make a decision based on our project brief as to what kind of textures, colors, patterns to use to be able to create the desired effect on our project. An important element that we are going to learn today is that every installation needs to be treated differently with a thought out plan in place. Think about it. You would make a very different decision about how to use fabric in a corporate accounting office than you would in a restaurant or retail environment. Fabric not only adds color to your project interior, but also adds texture, elegance, and plays a role in the sound installation and many, many other aspects. These functions will vary according to the place and the project type. So, for example, if you were wanting to soften up a very modern clinical space, you could consider adding some fabrics to your space, not only to visually soften the space, but they may even act as a noise-absorbing element, which will also soften the mood as well as the sound within the space. Let's take a step back and look at the fabric selection process. When selecting fabrics for your project installation, much like any other aspect we know with interior design, one should always keep the following in mind. The functionality and the goals of the space and the characteristics and the properties of that material. So what characteristics of that fabric selection are we working with? And then these elements need to harmonize. So your elements need to be matched with your functions and goals. So in essence, the characteristics of the materials need to harmonize with the function of the space. So essentially what is going to happen in the space and then I choose the fabric accordingly. As an example, let's have a look at this hotel lobby and consider the above. The function of the space in relation to the material selection. So in this case, the function of the space needs to accommodate large volumes of people at any given moment, as well as have some sort of visual appeal because it's a hotel lobby. We then need to look at the characteristics of the material choice that have been chosen for the space. They should be hard wearing to accommodate the volumes of people as well as visually pleasing as there's a focus on customer satisfaction. So based on the function of this hotel lobby and the goals that the client has for the space, I would strongly suggest using strong, hard wearing, easy to clean fabrics in the space to cater for the large volumes of people. We would also want to source a fabric that has a long lifespan and maybe something that's comfortable to sit on and has a really nice look to it. You as the designer would be required to select and source fabrics for your interiors based on your project briefs. You may be required to only select them or to ensure that they harmonize with the project or even to select materials and upholster certain furniture items. As an interior designer, we would use fabrics when it comes to the following aspects. So as I mentioned before, for upholstery purposes, and this simply means covering furniture pieces such as sofas, side chairs, ottomans, poofs, you name it. Then we would be using fabrics for accessories and soft furnishing. So this I refer to cushions, pillows, throws, sofas, any ornamental or soft furniture pieces. We would then also use fabrics for window treatment. So in this case, I would be referring to curtains or blinds, anything that would cover a window. 
We could also use fabrics for any sort of bedding, bedding related items such as sheets, duvets, etc. We would also use fabric for artwork, so art pieces, anything that sits on a wall, and these artworks may even have acoustic properties, so we may use fabric on our wall with acoustic properties to them. Whether you're buying new furniture or reupholstering an old furniture piece, the fabric selection is one of the most important choices you will need to make within the space. Here are some of the aspects of the space and the project that you want to consider when selecting fabrics for your project. So firstly, you need to consider the type of people that will be in the space. Think about the types of people that will need to function in the space. Are they children? Are they adults? How are they going to function and perform tasks within the space? What is going to happen in that space and how will that impact your fabric? We then need to look at the quantity of people or the traffic within the space. How many people are going to be exposed to that fabric? How many people will sit on that couch or that ottoman or sit on that bed, lie on that bed? We then need to look at the accessibility. How often are we going to be able to clean or access that space or be able to access the fabric selection? And next, something that we take for granted, we need to look at the animals. Are there going to be any animals that come into contact with that fabric or furniture piece? Do we need to accommodate for their behavior, their fur, etc.? And lastly, we need to look at the environmental elements, such as your sun, wind, water. Is there any water present or near the proposed fabric location? Is there going to be direct sunlight on the couch or furniture piece? All of these items are going to impact the fabric that you choose for that furniture piece or for that space. So, for example, in our adults category, if we've only got adults in the space and a very low traffic flow or traffic quantity, we're easily accessible to that fabric selection. There are no animals and there's no direct sunlight. We have a much more wider variety of fabric choices. For example, if we had animals on the couch, we'd obviously want to choose a fabric that is hard wearing, something easy to clean and something that doesn't generally attract fur or fluff and something easy to clean, obviously. Keeping in mind all of the above, a key tip to remember. Comfort is one of the most important factors to take into account when choosing the fabric for your interior. So all of these need to be considered, but obviously people need to function and live within these spaces, and therefore comfort is key. Fabric specification can often be broken up into two main categories. Firstly, we have our commercial grade or hospitality grade fabrics, and then we look at our domestic grade fabrics. The fabrics which are used in your hospitality area of interior design are called hospitality or commercial grade use fabrics. These fabrics generally have a higher scale of durability and typically are easier to wash, clean and maintain. This is mainly due to the fact that there is a much larger volume of people that access or perform functions within these spaces. Then your domestic grade fabrics are fabrics that are still fairly durable but do not re require such intense rub count or durability grade content. Just to recap, when I speak about domestic, I refer to a home environment. When I speak about hospitality sector, it usually refers to your restaurants and entertainment environments. And your commercial areas are usually your office environments. So as you can see, based on our descriptions, each area will have a different quantity of people coming through the doors at any given moment. Fabrics and textiles are used in multiple ways in architecture and interior design. In commercial buildings, textiles are typically specified for upholstery, window treatments and floorings. They can also be specified for tensile structures on an exterior application. Let's dig deeper into what textiles and fabrics are and is there really a big difference? Even though the term textile and fabric seem to have quite similar meanings, they are in fact two very different terms. A textile is typically produced by weaving, felting, knitting and tufting. Textiles are formed from a wide range of materials, from fibres and filaments to polymers and plastics. It is the finished product that we consider a textile. So in this case, your textile would be your carpeting, any walk-off mats, carpets, rugs, window shades, wall coverings and many, many, many other elements. Architects even make use of textiles in the form of tented canopies or tented structures. So it's large tensile fabrics draped over large expansions connected to cables or cords. Then we look at our fabrics. Our fabrics are made of natural or man-made fibers which have been woven together or knitted, crocheted or bonded together to form a type of cloth. Fabric is a type of textile. 
Fabrics, as we know, are upholstery, window dressing, window treatments, bedding, and linen. They are all used as fabrics in commercial, domestic, and hospitality environments. Fabrics in general can be broken up into two main categories, depending on what they are made of. So firstly, we've got a fabric of natural fiber, and then we have synthetic fabric fibers. Let's take a closer look at the natural fibers that we come across when we look at interior design. Natural fibers are typically animal or plant-based materials. General characteristics of natural fibers or natural fabrics are that they have the ability to take dye well and that they are biodegradable, sustainable, and most of them can be quite durable. Some of the natural fibers and fabrics that we're going to look at today are wool, leather, silk, cotton, linen, and hemp. Let's get going. So we start off with wool. Wool is an animal-based fiber that comes from a variety of animal hair sources. Some of these sources could be goat, sheep, lamb, alpacas, you name it. It's a fairly durable fabric choice and well known for being quite water resistant due to the oils that are produced from the animal's skin. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons associated with wool. Let's start off with our pros. So firstly, we know that it's a durable material. It's a water resistant material. It's naturally hypoallergenic. It's flame retardant. And it has really good self extinguishing properties. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of pros here. Let's look at some of the cons. So Wool generally damages easily. It's also quite susceptible to damage from insects. It's not easy to clean and requires proper cleaning to avoid permanent damage further on to the material. It can be damaged by excessive light or exposure to sunlight. Exposure to sunlight can bleach or pigment the fabric. And it's quite an expensive application. Wool fabrics are expensive and typically price themselves out of the traditional budgets that your clients may have. Because there are so many negative connotations when it comes to specifying wool, most wools are blended. A blend of wool is a blend of a synthetic substance and a natural substance. This allows us to take the best properties of wool and combine it with the best products of another material, which therefore makes it better for us and easier for us to use. Let's take a look at when you would typically specify wool in your project. You could consider using either 100% wool or you could use a wool blend to create a more cost effective solution in all of your projects. Remember this, you don't need to use 100% wool or 100% natural fiber. Consider specifying wool in your projects when you have the following elements. Low traffic zone, so low amount of people inhabiting that space. High visibility, this is to ensure that you are getting the maximum value out of your spend. And in areas that do not get too much natural or direct sunlight. Next on our list is leather and one of my favorite fabrics to work with. Leather is a natural fabric made from animal hides and therefore makes this material an incredibly durable choice. Here are some of the pros and cons when specifying leather for your project. Firstly, it's a hypoallergenic, it's an incredibly durable fabric and therefore easy to clean and it's really easy to maintain. Next, let's look at some of the cons. So it's a, quite an expensive fabric depending on your supplier or manufacturer, but it is quite expensive. It tends to crack easily, so it's prone to cracking, thinning and fading over time. Leather cannot withstand prolonged direct or indirect sunlight, so its con negative connotation is that it suffers from environmental damage. And lastly, and this is quite a big aspect or a negative element to leather, is that it's quite unethical. Some leather manufacturers use questionable harvesting practices, which is considered unethical and inhumane. And therefore, some of your clients may not enjoy the fact or enjoy you using leather in their space. Definitely something to ask before you start specifying or specking leather in your projects. So when would you consider using leather? When would you consider specifying leather in your project? So commercial and domestic environments are really good areas to use leather. Common commercial uses for leather are sofas, wall claddings, furniture cladding, and bar fronts. As well as in domestic use, you would do it in headboards, upholstery, and decorative throws or pillows on your beds. This is a great fabric for high traffic zones and therefore great for restaurants, hospitality, and commercial environments. 
It can also be used as an elegant finish or an elegant, luxurious element to bring within your space. Leather can come in 100% natural, so 100% leather or a fake leather, which is typically your synthetic fabric. This is used when real leather is unethical and or if the budget does not allow for real leather. Both are great for any installation. Silk is next on our list. Silk comes from a silkworm, or more precisely, the silkworm's cocoon. And obviously, this is as natural as it comes. There are some pros and cons that we need to look at when using silk on our project. So the pros we are going to start off with is that it's quite an elegant fabric, and it's got a really soft and luxurious feel to it. So obviously, using these fabrics in interiors that are high-end and need to look soft and luxurious. Then the cons we're going to look at is that it's an incredibly expensive fabric and it damages fairly easily. It's an incredible delicate fabric and therefore damages easily. What aspects do we consider when we are going to specify silk? So consider specifying silk in projects that you have low traffic zones or where it becomes more of a visual appeal rather than a functional purpose. I would typically use silk when a client has requested specifically that they want to use silk or for high-end domestic or hospitality use. And obviously the client would need to know that silk is not easy to maintain beforehand to avoid any unhappy clients. We don't want the client to misunderstand how to care for silk. Cotton is next and one of the favorites in many industries. Cotton is one of the most widely used fabric, especially when it comes to domestic and hospitality design sectors. Cotton fiber comes from the cotton plant, which is grown in warm climates. Here are some of the pros and cons you need to think about when specifying cotton. Firstly, cotton is a really durable fabric. It's strong, flexible, and really soft. Another pro is that it's a breathable fabric. It's porous and therefore allows breathability, not only for the client, but for the fabric too. It's really easy to dye and therefore allows us to change colors quite nicely. With all of that being said, it lends itself to being a cost-effective fabric. Some of the cons associated with cotton is that it's porous and therefore moisture retaining. So it's quite susceptible to mold and mildew if it hasn't been treated properly prior to the installation. Cotton is also prone to damage from insects such as moths and worms that like to feed on the fibers. And lastly, cotton tends to shrink and can stain easily also linking up with the fact that it's easy to dye. So it can be easy to change color, but it also retains stains. When would you typically use cotton on your project? So cotton is widely available and quite a resilient product. Therefore, it's a great product to use in almost any project. However, always important to take into consideration the care and instruction details, as well as the characteristics and properties of cotton. It is commonly used in slip covers, bedding, since cotton is the most easy to clean. You can clean cotton with soap and water. You will rarely find cotton as a 100% cotton upholstery fabric. It's typically part of a blend. And quite a nice blend to work with cotton is 60% cotton and 45% blend. Next on our list is linen. Linen is another plant-based fiber and fabric and known for its strength. Linen comes from the flax plant. Let's look at some of the pros. So firstly, linen is really strong and durable. It's smooth, soft, and obviously naturally luxurious. It's resilient and resistant to pilling, soiling, and has a really nice stiffness to it. Some of the negative connotations to linen is that it wrinkles easily. And then obviously, a stiffness can be a pro, but in this instance, the stiffness is a con as it does lend to the wrinkling aspect. Linen can also be pricey. The cost of linen is typically higher than cotton, but is generally affordable within a modest budget. So do bear that in mind when specifying linen. When would you typically specify linen for your project? So the natural stiffness of linen lends itself to commercial wall coverings, window treatments, lampshades, and drapery application. It's a fabric suited to casual installations rather than your formal ones. It's often used in a blend as well with cotton for greater elasticity. So because of its stiffness, by blending cotton, we get a nicer elastic feel to this fabric. Hemp is next on our list. Hemp is a highly sustainable, rapidly renewable plant based fiber. Hemp is starting to gain popularity for its sustainable and environmentally friendly properties. 
Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of using hemp in your interior installations. One of our pros is that it's water resistant. It is a really durable fabric, so fibers are similar to canvas in the texture and durability, but again, therefore it wrinkles easily. Hemp fabric is strong, but the fibers do weaken over time with repeated use. Then we take a look at our cons. One of the negative connotations to hemp fabric is that it has a tendency to weaken over time, and then obviously it wrinkles easily due to its stiffness and canvas-like texture. When would you typically use hemp on a project? Have a think about this. Based on the characteristics of hemp, when would you typically use hemp in a project? Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box. For those of you who are unsure, hemp is typically used for linens and bedding in commercial applications. You could use hemp when creating sustainable and environmentally friendly products or interiors, much like any of the natural fibers that we've just looked at it above. And then obviously bear in mind the stiffness to it. So you wouldn't necessarily put it on a pillow that you're going to sleep on, but you would definitely use it for a cushion or accessory pillow, something really nice to look at, and then obviously something to promote the sustainability. Let's take a look at a little example. So do you remember Sophia's office space? We needed some boardroom chairs. What fabric would you suggest we use to upholster these chairs based on some of the natural fabrics we've just looked at? So as a quick reminder, we looked at leather, cotton, silk, hemp. Which one would you suggest? Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box or simply jot them down in your sketchbooks. I typically would suggest leather. Why? Why do you think I would use leather as this best fit for this boardroom office installation? Leather is the most durable, hard-wearing and easy to clean fabric, as we know, and therefore perfect for office use. Do you see why it's so important to understand what the fabric will be used for in an office space or in any installation environment? Now that we've covered our natural fabric components, we are going to look at our synthetic fibers and fabrics. Synthetic fabrics or fibers mean that the material component is man-made. It's a man-made material. These fabrics have been specifically designed and created to replicate the best qualities and characteristics of those of the natural fibers. Synthetic fibers are created from scientifically engineered polymers with high melting points. Most synthetic fibers are designed to accept dyes after production, so they are easily dyed, or have color infused in them prior to the extraction. Synthetic fibers that we are going to look at for today's lesson include polyester, nylon, rayon, and lastly, we're going to look at a synthetic velvet, a very nice fabric to use within hospitality and domestic installations. But we're going to start off with our polyester. Polyester is made from a chemical reaction with petroleum. This is a high performance fabric, but not commonly used alone. So you'll often hear the word a polyester blend. It's blended with an additional fabric. Let's take a look at some of the pros of your polyester. So firstly, polyester is a really durable fabric. It's strong, stretchy and flexible. It's readily available, which makes it a nice fabric to use on any project. It's strong. Polyester blends provide a huge amount of strength. Next, it's cost effective. And lastly, and a very important element to polyester, it's really easy to clean. It's got a huge resistance to fading, wrinkling and abrasion. Next, we look at our cons. One of the only cons or one of the only two cons we have for today is it's not as soft as your natural fibers and it's not a sustainable or biodegradable product. So as you can see, there's a lot more pros than cons to polyester, which makes it a really nice fabric to use on kind of your low cost installations. When would you typically specify polyester in your project? So you would typically find your polyester blends in commercial and hospitality projects, projects that have a really high traffic zone and areas that need fabric that require little maintenance and something that is very durable. You can use polyester for upholstery, window treatments and drapery. So you wouldn't only limit polyester to commercial or hospitality. You could use it in homes and domestic environments, but obviously you probably want to use your more natural fibers in your domestic and then your man-made blends in your hospitality and commercial installations. Next on our list is nylon. Nylon is a generic term that defines a group of synthetic fibers that are extremely strong. So nylon equals strength. Let's look at some of the pros with nylon. Nylon is abrasion resistant. It has great elasticity qualities. 
It's a lightweight material and very cost effective. Some of the cons associated with nylon is that it fades and degrades when exposed to too much sunlight. It's not always associated with a luxurious mood or feel within a space. It's prone to static electricity and nylon is not heat resistant. It will melt at high temperatures. So this is something to bear in mind. When would we use nylon on our installation? So nylon is commonly used in carpet fibers and rugs in moderate to high traffic locations. It can be used in commercial, domestic and hospitality environments. Next, we're going to look at rayon. Rayon is the next synthetic fiber and is manufactured mainly from the pulp of wood cellulose fiber. Depending on the process, it can serve as a less expensive alternative to silk. Let's look at some of the pros and cons associated with rayon. So firstly, rayon is absorbent. It's fairly heat resistant and has excellent static resistance. Some of the cons associated with rayon include it's flammable and it wrinkles really easily. This material is a cost-effective alternative to your silk, as we know, and therefore can produce quite a nice cost-effective look and feel within any interior space or application. The material must be treated to utilize in a drapery application or for upholstery, and it has suggested limitations on the traffic and location application. And finally, our last synthetic fiber and fabric for today, we look at velvet. Velvet in this instance, we are looking at the man-made or synthetic type. Let's start with some of the pros. So a pro to the synthetic velvet is that it's extremely cost-effective. It's really luxurious and hard-wearing. And another important element and something that I consider in most of my applications is that it's a very durable fabric. So this type of velvet is really nice for hospitality, domestic and commercial installations. Some of the cons associated with velvet is that it's very flammable and difficult to clean and therefore obviously difficult to maintain. Let's look at when we would use velvet in any of our installations. Polyester velvets are made more durable than the natural fiber counterparts of velvet. These velvets are difficult to clean, but they stand out for the comfort, texture, and their rich color options. You would typically use these materials for upholstery purposes in limited quantities due to the problem with cleaning and maintenance. Velvet is great for couches and headboards in your homes and hotels, and even some occasional seating in reception and lobby areas. Next, we are going to look at textile properties and what to consider looking out for when selecting your fabric choices. Upholstering your client's sofa or headboard can be an investment, so you really don't want to second guess your decisions later down the line. Choose the wrong material and you'll find yourself battling snags and stains and unhappy clients and customers. Making a mistake on color or pattern and the whole room can suffer. So before you pick your new upholstery or fabric, here are some areas that you need to consider when selecting the fabric for upholstery applications or in any interior project application. Firstly, we need to consider the fabric properties, the characteristics of the fabric, the appearance that the fabric is going to give off, the durability, so the, how hard wearing your fabric may be, and something quite interesting, the acoustic value. We are going to start off with our physical properties of the fabric. So this is obviously something that we need to consider when choosing our our fabrics. What are the physical properties? So the physical properties of fabrics are the physical elements of the fabric. The following physical pro properties are used to define the physical elements of each fabric. So what makes up the fabric? Firstly, you would look at the fiber or filament. This would be the type, the size, the length, anything to do with the type, size and length of that fabric. You'd also need to know the weight of the fabric per square meter or per linear meter or per ounce or per yard, etc. You would then need to consider the thickness, so the vertical depth of that fabric, the structure of the fabric, how the fabric is made up, the finishes of the fabric, so chemical finishes such as resins, starches, waxes, mechanical fixtures, anything relating to how that fabric is finished, because obviously that will impact how you use it or where you use it on a project. You would then need to look at the width of the fabric, and then obviously the color of the fabric, so the hue, the value, and the intensity of the fabric. And obviously that then needs to relate back to the color scheme that you've used for your project. 
we would look at the fabric density, so the weight of the fabric. How heavy is the fabric? Not only um, physically, but we'd also look at the visual weight. What weight does that fabric have in the space? And lastly, the surface contour. So any geometric dimension, surface plane, any contouring on that fabric. Texture, essentially. Next, we're going to look at the characteristics of the fabric. The physical characteristics are the dynamic physical parameters of the fabric. The physical changes of the fabric that result from applying outside force to the fabric. So some of these characteristics are the style characteristics. We need to look at the style of that fabric. The utility characteristics. The durability, so how durable, how strong is that fabric? And lastly, we need to look at the production characteristics. Next, we need to look at the fabric appearance. So when it comes to the appearance of the fabric, you need to consider elements such as the luster or sheen. So your luster or sheen is primarily determined by the fiber type. So the light reflecting off the surface, the applied finish. What does that finish look like? Then we need to look at the feel, the touch, how that fabric feels to the touch of the hand. Then we'll look at the texture, the tactile feeling of that fabric. Next, we need to look at the color. So obviously, this is your hue, your shade, your tones, your vibrance. Has the fabric been dyed? If so, what color has it been dyed to and how that will affect the use of the fabric? And lastly, and quite an important element, we need to look at the pilling. So pilling refers to fibers of the material that break away and form little balls on the fabric surface. So I'm sure you've seen that on your clothes. Little tiny balls may form on your jerseys or your sweaters, any kind of fabrics that create little balls on the surface. Pilling typically occurs in areas of heavy use. So if your couch has been sat on a lot, that fabric may pull depending on the characteristic of that fabric. The next textile property we need to look at is the durability. And obviously, this is a really important element to consider. Your durability characteristics are how that fabric functions during a lot of wear and a lot of use. The characteristics that you need to look out for in your fabrics in terms of durability is the abrasive strength, the measure of rubbing action, bursting strength, the measure of vertical pressure, the launder ability. So this is really important. How is that fabric able to be cleaned? Can we wash the fabric? Can it go through excessive laundry use or does it need to be washed carefully and with finesse? You would also look at the tearing strength. Does that fabric tear easily? Does it take a lot for that fabric to tear? We would look at moth resistance. So does is the fabric natural? Do moths get attracted to it? Is it synthetic? Do moths like to eat those fibers, etc.? We would look at the tensile strength, as well as the fire resistance strength, corrosive strength, and then obviously dry cleaning and durability, also another important element of the durability areas. Next, we need to look at the acoustic values. This is a really interesting element and characteristic and property of fabric or materials, how it reacts acoustically within the space. And this is one of my favorite elements to look out for with fabrics and can often be a really important characteristic. Fabric can help control the sound in a room to improve the acoustic quality and the environment for occupants. Transparent fabrics will allow sound to pass, whereas your more dense and absorbent materials will absorb the noise or sound within the space. You may often see wall paneling, as you can see in your image, on walls and office spaces. This is to dampen the sound, so it's not too echoey or sparse sounding. Next, we're going to look at what it means to upholster furniture. Using the fabrics we've just looked at, how do you upholster furniture? When it comes to fabrics and interior design, there's a term commonly used, and it's called upholstery. Can anyone tell me what they think it means to upholster a chair or a headboard? Pop your answers into your Morpheus text box. What does it mean to upholster? Upholstery is the materials, which include fabric, padding, webbing, and springs, that make up the soft covering of chairs, sofas, and other furniture items. The process of upholstery began in the Middle Ages and started to grow popularity between the 17th and 18th century. Over the years, a wide variety of materials have been used, such as horsehair, wool, any kind of fabrics. So in essence, upholstery is taking the fabrics that we've just look, looked at and using them to cover furniture pieces. So as you can see with the orange couch on your screen, that couch has been upholstered in a fabric. It has been covered in a fabric. And you can use any kind of fabric that we've just looked at. So obviously within relation to the characteristics, you would choose a fabric such as leather, polyester, 
rayon, whatever your choice may be, and use that to cover a furniture item. We've now covered everything we need to about fabrics, characteristics, and their properties. Before we end off today's lesson, we are going to look at a really handy trick of the trade, and that is how to calculate the quantity of fabric you need to upholster your curtains. Measuring your windows and getting the fabric quantities correct is vital to creating any sort of window treatment or window dressing. I would start by standing in front of the window that you're wanting to add curtains to and visualize the curtain type that you're wanting to create. Some of the things that you may want to consider is the pattern that you're wanting on your curtains, the finished height and width that you're wanting to produce or create, and how voluminous you're wanting your curtains. As a general rule, fixtures should be the width of the window, as well as allowance for stacking space. So you need to allow enough space for the curtains on the left and the right hand side to stack into a corner. Let's see how it's done. Step one is measuring your window width. So we are going to start off by getting a tape measure out and measuring the width of the window or the space that you are wanting to add a curtain to. So we're going to use an example here. In my case, I'm using 1,500 millimeters, and that's the width of my curtain. I'm then going to want to add a little bit of volume and fullness to my curtain or my fabric. So I'm going to times my width by 2.5. You now need to divide the above measurement by the width of your fabric. This is a dimension that you can obtain from your local fabric store. Fabrics come in standard width sizes. So in my case, and where we're coming from or where I'm working from, a standard width for us is 150 centimeters or 1,500 millimeters. So I'm going to take my width of my window, which has been times by 2.5 for volume. I get 3,700 millimeters, and I divide that by 1,500 or 150 centimeters, which is my fabric panel width. I then get a measurement or a dimension of 2,46666. I need to round that to the nearest decimal point, and I'm going to round it to 2.5. And that essentially equates to the number of drops or the number of widths you will need. Next, we're going to look at the length. Take the final measurement or the desired length you want. So from floor to just above the window. So in our case, it's 2,1 millimeters. We are going to add some allowance for the hem at the bottom. So I'm going to add 250 mils to that measurement, 250 millimeters or 25 centimeters. I'm then going to times that number by the widths that I obtained from my previous slide. So in essence, I've got 2,350 times 2,5, and that's going to give me the quantity of fabric required. So 2,350 millimeters times by the width of 2,5 gets me to 5,875 millimeters, and that means the quantity of fabric required for these curtains are going to be 5,8 meters, because obviously 5,875 millimeters is equivalent to 5,8 meters. And there you have it. That is how you calculate quantity of fabric for curtains. There are many different types of curtains, so please do bear that in mind. But this will give you a fairly basic curtain and enough fabric to ask your local fabric supplier to supply you for beautiful curtains. And that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Let's do a quick recap so that we're all on the same page. So in this lesson, we looked at what fabrics and textiles were. We gained the ability to identify fabrics and the fabric characteristics. We identified and understood the definition of upholstery and how upholstery works. And lastly, and really excitingly, we looked at how to calculate fabric quantities for our curtains. And with that, that brings us to our challenge. So for today's lesson, I want you to specify two boardroom chair fabric options. So essentially, you're going to go out and find two fabric options for the boardroom chair for Sophia's office space. I'd like you to get some samples of each of the fabrics. So for example, if you specified a leather, get a sample of a little piece of leather. Or if you specified a rayon or a nylon or a hemp, get a little sample of that and list the characteristics and the pros and cons of each of the fabric choices. So you can take these fabric swatches, paste them into your sketchbooks and list the elements, characteristics, pros and cons there. Or you could do it on a separate piece of paper, or you can even do it digitally on computer and then 
screenshot it and send it to your social media platforms. I'd like you to also list each of the reasons why you have selected these fabric choices next to the fabric swatches so that I know and I get a good understanding of why you've chosen them. So you could say that you've chosen them from an aesthetic point of view because the color is great, a texture point of view because the texture feels nice. You could have chosen them because they are really durable fabrics, which is probably what I'd expect for this kind of installation. You could also say that you've chosen them because they are easy to clean or easy to maintain, which is also fantastic because in a boardroom installation, you'd want something that was easy to clean and something that was hard wearing.